Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about probably the most easy way to make money from Magic right now. It is not speculation. Speculation, quote, MTG Finance, is very difficult because unlike most things, like a job, you have the opportunity to lose money. And there's the loss of opportunity. So if you go to your job and you work eight hours, you're guaranteed, assuming it's a regular job, a paycheck. Well, here, when you speculate on $80 of cards, A, the cards are not going to double overnight, and B, the cards could actually go down to $20 if there was a reprint. Now, what if there was a way for you to sell crappy decks where the bulk value of the deck was like $0.25, cents, maybe $0.50, cents, if that? and you could sell the deck for $6. Now that's interesting, that has very big margins, and that's something I wanna get into. So this Justin guy said that he came up with the, so he works for Card Kingdom, he came up with the decks that I made fun of before. Lo and to my surprise, imagine that Cool Stuff Inc. also took his concept pretty much decided there was a lot of money into it. So when people, when big vendors are copying each other, you know that there, there is a lot of money in this product. So new player deck, um, the turn order cards, they look very similar. It's not copyright because again, it's a card game you don't own. So it's not like this is unique. Um, you can make a new player deck. Anyone can do this. You, me, a pet dog can do this. It's not something that is creatively unique. And even the turn card, even the turn card is not something that I would say is copyrightable or patentable because it is part of a card game that they don't own. So back to the point, I know there is a ton of money in this. I've never seen bulk prices this high before. Like this is pretty crazy. And all you had to do was print the turn order card and some instructions cards and that's it. And those are really cheap. Once you make them, you're good. And then again, you can just pretty much copy these two right here and you would probably be okay because how many other ways can you talk about turn order? Now, if 90% or 99% of Magic players do not go to GPs, do not go to FNM, do not go to pre-release because they're super casual, this is the product they're going to buy. I guarantee you this is a product they will buy because they've bought far worse products before. The mo monthly Magic box, they're still buying today, although the guy's been in jail for three to four years already. They're still paying the dude because, you know, all that, quote, sponsored promotion Puka trade. I mean, how many people went into Puka trade and thought that it was not a scam? Hundreds of thousands of casual players. And then who's left holding the bag? Because there is a bag and it's very heavy and has no money in it. So let's read Justin. I am not debating the idea of new player decks. Let's be clear. The idea that there is one way to design and lay out this information is ridiculous. How would I like it to look? ideally like they didn't copy my work. They obviously looked at your design, thought it was an elegant and straightforward, adjusted it to cover their legal obligations and create their own version of the product. This is 100% how the pro art industry works. I'm a 10 year vet of it and calling them scumbags is out of line. So let's say you make a artist's work or you go to any anime convention and there's a place called the artist gallery or even the vendor's booth. A lot of times they just quote, use, you know, fan art, right? Fan art or a cosplaying for instance. And people have a slightly different take on it, but is it copying someone else's cosplay? So let's say I cosplay as Mario and A is in Mario and you cosplay as Mario. But my cosplay more, and you did kind of a crossover with Halo Mario, and I did a crossover with Halo Mario, and I looked at your design, I thought it was really cool, and I copied some elements of it. Now, would I be sued? No, because you copied 
See, the problem here is they don't own the card game. So how are they going to copyright a patent on something they do not own? So the design and feel of this, I mean, if you really want to get technical, Wizard of the Coast was the first one to make the introduction play decks a long time ago. But this is absolutely the highest margin product I've seen on the marketplace. This is something I'm going to get on board with because, my gosh, if I can sell 25 cents of bulk for $6, I have a lot of bulk. So I'm going to make these decks. They're going to be um, maybe magic for her. I'm kind of looking into that product. You know, I can make the same deck and charge a little bit more money and then use that. So instead of charging $6 a deck, I'll charge 10 and I'll just say $4 uh, will be donated to a nonprofit of my choice. And then, I'll and then people will flood it, right? I mean, that's perfect marketing for magic for her decks. My point is, you have a product that I know is very profitable. If this product was not profitable and not making hands over fist of money, they would not have Tolarian Community College promote it. If this product was not profitable, you would not have competitors make the identical product. So here he says, I have no beef with another company making decks for new players. That would be ridiculous. It is not a concept you can own. And the MTG business, blah, blah, blah. The, the real problem is how this product is packaged and designed. The way a new player deck looks is not set in stone. The sky's limit. It can look any way you want. So when a product comes out that's the same concept and then borrows the design laid out and copy, that is both lazy and scummy. Is it legal or moral? Legal, I'm not sure. I'm sure moral, that's up to you. I, but I'm not suing. I'm not pursuing legal action because he's not going to win or anything like that. That would be silly. But as an artist and a member of a small community, it feels really bad to have your work, hard work stolen and passed off. A little history on the decks. I work as Card Kingdom's lead graphic designer, but the other job I have is designing new wholesale products for this. The fact that he's so offended by this tells you how much money they've made. They are making hundreds of thousands of dollars on this product because if the demographics are correct and magic really has 20 million players but the large majority of them don't care about going pros or gps which is so funny that they promote pro magic players so much although they are some of the most toxic individuals like is this really like who a casual player will look up to you like no it is not so we all got to get on this because, my gosh, this is even better than repack. So repack, you have, at least you have to fake. You have to fake that you're going to give someone a good card. Here, because they're, quote, casual players, like the monthly magic box, you can just take them to host town and just destroy them in value, right? Like, I have never seen a more clever way to sell bulk cards in my life. And I've seen so many ways, like Craigslist, the $1,000 kits, and then it comes from land, and then the... $10,000, you know, the $5,000 long box. Like, I've seen some pretty interesting ways that MTG Finance has tried to sell bulk to casual players. Totally useless bulk. But I've never seen this way. I've seen um, when Goodwill tries to promote it on, on its really crappy uh, eBay-like website. I've seen many people try to hype up bulk, but they're going after the wrong audience. Because the majority of Magic players who actually, you know, go to F and M, they don't, they're not going to be interested in buying this deck. So if the person who's interested in buying this deck has no concern over value, then you hose them to oblivion, and this is what's happening here. Let me put it this way: you have two companies, two very large companies, promoting the same product to the same demographic. This did not come by mistake. It was from research. It was from analytics. It was from... No, I mean, I'm pretty sure Cool Stuff Inc. knew it would take heat, but it doesn't care because when you're making hands over fists of money, why would you care? When you're selling bulk cards for way, 10, 10 times what you normally could get, and you just insert like a printable like uh, turn card, you're good. I mean, why would no? Why would 
why wouldn't we engage in this selling to casual players to it's the same of it's the same as signing them up with puka trade you get a popular youtuber uh, or several and then you convince the casual audience members because they don't know that it's a ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme or a triangle scheme and then they all join and they don't realize the person telling them to join has just received thou hundreds maybe not yeah together hundreds of thousands of dollars of points and therefore will have a very different experience from you who received your 300 points which at that time still very a lot this is the best way to hose casual players like i've never seen a better way because you're targeting a particular player that does not know value it's very smart anyway Bye, guys.